Welcome to a look at a very seasonally appropriate game, the Kringle Caper from Grand Gamers Guild, who we have to thank for our review copy. So the Kringle Caper was the first game ever released in the Holiday Hijinks series of escape room games from Jonathan Schaefer and Grand Gamers Guild, who first published this game back in 2020. This small escape room in a box style game is designed for one or more elves of any age with a playtime of about an hour. It has a listed difficulty of two out of three. As expected, this game features a North American Christmas theme that has you playing elves at the North Pole, trying to solve the case of a missing cookie. This is all done through a set of 18 double-sided cards and a web app. As this is an escape room game, and we didn't want to spoil anything, we don't have an unboxing to share with you tonight. Plus, there isn't much to see here. Like all <laughs> holiday hijinks games, the Kringle Caper is just a small card pack with 18 cards. In the pack, you get the instructions, which provide a QR code to a web app. Now, the quality here is good, but nothing fancy. In addition to the stuff you get in the pack, you are probably going to want some scrap paper and something to write with. Now, I also strongly suggest a set of card sleeves and some wet erase markers. Or I guess you can use Sharpies if you don't want to reuse your card sleeves. Because some of these puzzles are going to be much easier to solve if you write on the cards. And by putting them on sleeves, it makes it so you can still have a playable game at the end instead of making it a one and done, which for one is more environmentally sound, but also it lets you gift the game to someone else once you've completed it. As for how to play, it's really simple. You unpack the cards and place the deck face down without looking at any of them. You load up the web page and pick the appropriate game. As this is the first of the Holiday Hijinks games, it's right at the top of the page. That will start a timer and instruct you to grab card one. It then presents the start of the story. Now on the cards, you're going to find some form of puzzle to solve and one or more magnifying glass symbols. For every magnifying glass symbol, you will have to enter an answer on the web app. If you get it right, the app will continue the story and have you draw another card. Now, some puzzles will require more than one card, and most of these will require familiarity with North American Christmas traditions, the Santa-based ones and not religious ones. If you aren't familiar with these or just can't remember what was given on the ninth day of Christmas, the app includes a list of traditional holiday songs, writings, and poems to help you out. There's also a progressive hint system if you get stuck. You continue solving puzzles, entering answers, and reading the story till you eventually find out who the culprit is. At that point, you're given a final score and have the option to submit that score to Grand Gamers Guild, where they'll use it to help set the difficulty level and things like that on future holiday hijinks games. They just record information like how long it took you, how many clues you used, and so on. Now, despite the fact this is the first holiday hijinks game, this isn't the first you've played with your family. No, that's right. This is actually the fifth holiday hijinks game I played um, just due to the fact that Mark from Grand Gamers Guild handed me a stack of them at once. So we've just been playing each of them as we get close to each of the holidays that have been featured. Now, if you have time, I invite you to check out our hol other holiday hijinks reviews. These include the independence incident, the pumpkin problem, the turkey trial and the birthday burglary. So how did this one compare to the others? I know you've been impressed by the variety in previous games. So I think... It seemed obvious to me or it stuck out to me that this was the first game in the series as it is extremely linear. You start at card one. It has a puzzle on it. You solve it. It says draw card two, which has a different puzzle on it. You solve that and then you draw card three. Yes, eventually some puzzles have you draw two cards when you finish and some of the solutions may need you to use cards you used earlier. You might have to go back. Uh, but basically you are handheld through this entire thing It is purely linear. Now, while that may be a bit of a letdown for people who've played many of these before, it does, however, sound like a great introduction, mm -hmm. as well as a great one to introduce family who aren't gamers at the holidays to. Yeah, and I agree. And unlike some of the later games in the series, like there's no branching paths. There's no feeling of exploration. It doesn't feel like a point and click adventure. It feels like a series of puzzles that when you solve them unlocks the next part. You're never presented with more than one puzzle at once either. Now, that is a mixed blessing. Now, on one hand, it makes this the most accessible holiday hijinks game for families, especially those with young kids, because this is so simple and straightforward. On the other hand, though, with only presenting one puzzle at a time, it did make it kind of hard to collaborate with others while playing the Kringle Caper. 
most of the puzzles here actually could only really be played by one person, like worked on by one person at a time because they involved uh, like physical puzzles, right? They involved searching for words or comparing two images to look for differences or solving a map, for example, or a maze. Now, if you do have more than just a couple of players, what you're probably going to want to do to kind of spread out the fun is have take turns flipping over the cards, right? Because like I said, it's, it's linear. So I solve puzzle two, you get to try puzzle three first. You read the puzzle three card, you try to solve it, and then you only get the other players involved if you get stuck and need help. So it could be nice if you have a group during the holidays to let everyone have a try at a puzzle and work together on anything that gives you a hard time. Yeah, pretty much. Now, as for the difficulty uh, in the Kringle Caper, it seemed good. Uh, there were some puzzles we solved instantly, like like we got like the first letter and like, oh, it's obviously this. Um, th those you just fly through, right? You progress the story quickly. Other puzzles took some thinking. And I will say there is one puzzle that had us stumped and did make us glad that there were four of us at the table so that we could bounce ideas off each other and eventually got unstuck. Uh, we did not use any clues, but we did answer uh, a couple of the questions wrong which I think affected our score. Uh, they rated this a two out of three based on the other games, and I can say that seems about right. No, this is for a family that grew up with North American Christmas traditions, who know all the songs, mostly by heart, and know what Santa's list is all about. Yeah. The difficulty is going to be significantly higher for a family who is new tr to these traditions. Yeah, because all of all the holiday hijinks games we played, um, this is the one that made me want to write on the cards the most. Um, this one really, like I said, the style of puzzles were very, you know, go to the corner store and buy a book of games to, to you know, do on the train is kind of the feeling it gave me. Even with sleeves, though, you're going to have at least one puzzle in here that's not going to work for sleeves and you're still going to want to write on the cards. Now, what I ended up doing is I just used my phone and I took a picture of it. And then went to the went to my you know graphics thing and used markup so I could draw on it digitally. Um, so that is something to be aware of. That that there is definitely they expect you to draw on the cards in this particular game. And that's actually a great solution, as there are so many apps that you can doodle with and manipulate things on your phone. Why not use it? Even though you've got a physical object right there in front of you, yep. saves on wear and tear and helps make that game easy to pass on to someone else to enjoy rather than uh, heading off to the landfill early on. And fair enough, I probably could have done that for every card in the game instead of using the sleeves, but there is something tactile and I just, I'm, I'm old school. I prefer actually drawing, but there was one, like I said, there was no way to get that into a sleeve and try to solve. Uh, overall, we had a good time playing through the Kringle Caper. It was four of us. It was uh, me, Deanna, and both of my kids. I know my kids are, are teens now. They're older. It's a, they're not little kids. The story was cute. Uh, the puzzles were well-designed. And and just hard enough. I, the, the nice part, though, is like the theme worked like it, you got that Santa. I, I could have been in a Christmas special, right? Rankin Bass could have uh, animated our adventures. And it gave that North American Christmas feel. Uh, lots of references to longstanding holiday traditions. So as long as you're up to speed with the standard North American Christian traditions of a secular style, you should be able to enjoy this. Then again, if you want to learn more about these traditions, this might be a fun way, especially because all the info is there on the web app to re uh, reference. I think Sean said North American Christian traditions, Christmas traditions, which I do know I have some roots with Christian traditions. This actually, I was thinking about it, the, the way you worded that is it, it might also be a great way to teach someone about North American Christmas traditions or to, to familiarize yourself with them if you are not familiar with them. I got to say, if you're looking for a fun holiday activity to do with your family, uh, especially if you have kids who will get a kick out of being elves running around the North Pole solving a mystery, you should pick this game up. Uh, you can get it in print or there's a print and play version. You can get it direct from Grand Gamers Guild, where you can also use our code BELLHOP to save 10% on any other games, including this one. While there, be sure to check out the other holiday hijinks games. Each is themed after a different holiday, with the next one coming up being Groundhog Day. And I'm sure we'll be back in probably late January with a review of that one as well. Well, that's it for our look at the Kringle Caper, the first game in the holiday hijinks series of escape room games from Grand Gamers Guild. If you enjoyed this review, how about you treat us to a coffee over at coffee.com, K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash tabletop bellhop or i guess maybe at this point a cup of hot cocoa is probably more fitting 